Hey guys, how's everyone enjoying our spooky segment for the month of October? I've really enjoyed researching these cases lately, for the most part. Today's episode is not a particular favorite pastime of mine. Um, But it definitely validates one of my biggest fears. You see, I am deathly afraid of clowns. Yeah, I said clowns. We're not talking about the most well-known killer clown, though. Nope. No, no. Everyone knows about John Wayne Gacy. We're not going to talk about him. I want to bring attention to the female counterpart. And that is where we begin our story today. Marlene Warren was born in 1950 in Michigan. By 1990, she was a cargo ship inspector and owned at least 20 rental properties. She would she was married to Michael Warren and together they had two sons. Around this same time, Marlene had reason to believe that her husband Mike was cheating on her and she was actually wanting a divorce but everything they owned was in her name and she was worried about how that would go over in court and with all the proceedings and everything but she was so concerned that she told her parents if anything happens to me Mike done it Marlene's fears would soon come to fruition, but not at the hands of Mike. On May 26, 1990, the doorbell rang at the Warrens' home in Wellington, Florida. Marlene answered the door to find a clown with a bouquet of carnations and two balloons for her. As she accepted the gifts, The clown pulled out a gun and shot her in the face. Marlene would pass away from her injuries on May 28, 1990, after two days in the hospital. She was 40 years old. Marlene's 21-year-old son, Joseph, witnessed the entire thing. He gave the police a description of the clown and the getaway car that they calmly walked to after they shot his mother. Now, Marlene's husband, Michael, was supposedly on his way to a racetrack in Miami. After talking with relatives and neighbors, it was widely believed that Michael was having an affair with a woman named Sheila Keene. Sheila and her husband were the repo people for Michael's car lot. Sheila and Michael both denied the affair. Later events lead me to believe it was definitely happening. This case would soon go cold with Sheila being the main suspect. In 1994, Michael was convicted of grand theft, racketeering, and odometer tampering. Now, if you're wondering what all of those are, we're going to start with the grand theft, which is you basically stole something worth more than $300 at that time. I think now it's like $500, but at that time it was $300. Racketeering is it it can be one of three things it can be drug trafficking money laundering and or embezzlement 
And then odometer tampering is when you disconnect, reset, or alter the number of miles that your vehicle has. All three of these are felonies. And they come with steep fines and typically prison time. Um, Just for the odometer stunt alone, you're looking at a $10,000 fine and or 30 years prison. uh, And that's federal prison time. And that's the max. 30 years is the max. Racketeering is punishable by no less than 30 to 36 months in federal prison. And grand theft is the exact same as the odometer tampering. Michael Warren spent four years in prison. I'm assuming this is because he paid the fines as well as agreed to an allotted sentence. In 2002, Michael married Sheila Kane. And the couple moved to Abington, Virginia. And in 2014, a cold case team reopened the investigation into Marlene Warren's death. After going over the evidence and using new DNA science, Sheila Keen Warren was arrested in Virginia in September 2017. The employees at the local costume shop picked Sheila out of a photo lineup as the person who purchased the clown costume and the employees at the local Publix grocery store ID'd her as the person who purchased two balloons and a bouquet of flowers about an hour before the shooting took place. The getaway car was reportedly stolen from Michael's car dealership A month before the shooting. All of this is adding up to they were definitely having an affair. The state of Florida originally wanted to seek the death penalty, but decided to drop that case in lieu of life imprisonment on a first degree murder charge. However, on April 25th, 2023, Sheila took a plea deal would cut her sentence down tremendously. Instead of life imprisonment, she would only spend 12 years in prison for second degree murder. She would also be allowed to accept time gained for spending six years waiting for her trial. She could be eligible for release as early as 2024. Now, if you're anything like me, your head's probably reeling and you're probably mad over that. But let me break that down for you because this is how the court system works. So... Nowadays, they would be really tough, even on a second-degree murder rap. But because the murder happened in 1990, the court has to go by the laws that were in place at that time. So, unfortunately, at that time, the max sentence for second-degree murder was around 12 years with the possibility of parole or early release. And so, they had to offer her that deal. Especially since their case was kind of falling apart around them because a lot of witnesses had died because it's been 30 years. Even the son said that the getaway car that they supposedly found the DNA in was not the right car. Um, it was just one thing after another. And they they just started having issues with 
their whole case falling apart. So they had to take something. So, yeah. I hate clowns for this very reason. I don't even like Ronald McDonald, y'all. I, I cried the last time I saw a person dressed as Ronald. I was not a child. <laughs> I, I am that scared of clowns. I don't I don't like adults in any kind of costume. I don't like the Easter Bunny. I, I'm not a big fan of Santa Claus. Like um I it's not it's not something that I try to be around. But yeah, that's that's the story of the female killer clown. And so far, that's the only one that I've found that was like that. And I know this episode's not quite as long as the others have been. But I promise uh, my next two episodes are going to be pretty interesting. Uh, My best friend Brittany is going to be joining me for both of those episodes. One is going to be on the 29th. And the other will be on Halloween, which is also Brittany's birthday. So I'm looking forward to that. But anyway, thank you guys so, so much for joining me for this episode. Please remember, if you are not already following the podcast on Spotify, please go do that. And make sure you're listening as well. When we hit 50 followers, I am going to eat sour candy. When we hit 100, I will do a bean boozle challenge. And when we get monetized, I will do a spicy food challenge. Now, in order to see these things, you will want to follow the True Crime and Whatnot podcast page on Facebook. And I am debating on starting a Twitch channel where I can do these little things as well. Um, If you guys would be interested, please reach out and let me know. I can even put it as a poll on the Facebook page. If you guys would be so kind as to let me know what you think of that. But, yeah. Other than that, thank you guys again for your support. And as always, stay true and whatnot. Later.